Okay, from what we did the other day, the fundamental theorem of algebra says if I have a polynomial of degree n, I'm going to have at least one complex solution. In fact, if I count uh, the repeated zeros, that's how many solutions I, I could have total. So if I have like something to the fifth power, that means I want to have five solutions if I if I've got some double roots in there. So you might ha not have five different ones, but you have a total of five answers. Now I could rewrite them in linear form by subtracting each of the roots and multiplying by some coefficient. Continuing on here, we have our conjugate root theorem. Our conjugate root theorem tells us, hey, if, if I've got a root of a polynomial that is complex or rash, irrational, they come in pairs. So if I got a form of a plus bi, I know I'm going to have a minus bi as a root. If I've got an irrational root like a plus the square root of b, I know I have a minus the square root of b. We kind of knew that from your quadratic formula. So let's do a problem like that. I want to write a polynomial function of the smallest degree with real coefficients in standard form that has negative 1, 2, and 2 minus i as zeros. Now notice, if I have 2 minus i, I automatically I have 2 plus i. So now let's write that in linear form. So I'm going to say, oh, that's going to be x minus 1. Try that again, x minus a negative 1. Times x minus 2. Times x minus 2 minus i times x minus 2 plus i. Now let's simplify that a tad. So that will be x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 plus i times x minus 2 minus i. Now on Schoology, I did give you access to a polynomial calculator, a complex calculator. You could type these in and multiply them out. But notice what happens here. If I take x minus 2 plus i times x minus 2 minus i, that's the same thing as taking x plus y times x minus y. So what I'm going to get is I'm going to get x squared minus y squared. So I'll say x minus 2 squared minus i squared. Well, I can simplify x minus 2 squared. That's x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I'm going to subtract a negative 1. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 5. Let's try that again. And then I can multiply that. If I take x plus 1 times x minus 2, there I'll get x squared minus x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply x squared minus x minus 2. I'm going to multiply that by x squared minus 4x plus 5. When I multiply two trinomials here, I think I like the box method the best as a strategy to multiply those to make sure I distribute everything and combine my like terms. So I'm going to go x squared minus x minus 2. I'm going to multiply that by x squared minus 4x plus 5. This is just a strategy to help me remember to distribute all my terms. So I get x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared. Then I'll take negative 4, so I'll get negative 4x cubed uh, positive 4x squared and then positive 8x. Then multiply by 5, I get 5x squared minus 5x minus 10. So then I'm going to write my polynomial in my form. So my polynomial, notice what happens here when I use the box method. My like terms are diagonals. So I can add them up. So then I'm going to get x to the fourth. I'll say f of x 
Ooh. equals x to the fourth. And then negative 4 minus 5 would be negative 5x cubed. 5 plus 9 minus 2 would be positive 7x squared. Negative 5 plus 8 would be positive 3x minus 10. There is your polynomial with roots of negative 1, 2, and 2 minus i. Also has to have 2 plus i. That's the one with the least degree. And it has a leading coefficient of 1. If I said write a polynomial with a leading coefficient of 5, then I would do is I would take and multiply everything by 5. 